Hi, I'm Eva Bloom Dumonté. I'm a researcher at Privacy International. I do a lot of investigation into surveillance and data technologies globally. That means that I'm often interviewing sources to find out what they know. People can be a tricky source of information. They have their own agendas, egos and interests. They can misremember or forget things, make mistakes, contradict themselves or deliberately mislead you. So if you plan to speak to people as part of your research methodology, you need to think carefully about your approach. I'll be going through a few all-purpose tips and suggestions that I found really useful in my own work to get the most out of your interview. This is primarily geared toward one-on-one -on -one interviews, so that means you speaking to another person. Firstly, do your homework. Why is this person a relevant person for you to interview? What insights are you hoping they'll give you? You don't want to spend all your time asking them questions you could easily answer from some simple searching online. You should be familiar with their views. For example, by having reviewed if they have published statements online or are quoted in the media. Know their CV information. It will help you connect with them. Like, do you both have a shared interest or hobby? It will also save you some embarrassments. They may dismiss you as ill-informed or a time waster if they think they have to tell you the very basics of who they are or what issues you're discussing. What motivation would this person have to speak with you? Apart from official spokespeople whose job it is to talk to the likes of you, most people have other motivations. For some, it's ego. People like to be considered experts in their fields. They may feel like they have a unique perspective on the issues you're discussing. You can use that your advantage to keep them talking. For others, it may be revenge. Disgruntled former employees can often be the most useful source of information about an organization or company. They could provide counterexample to the typical PR spin. But bear in mind too that you'll have to evaluate what they say with a dose of skepticism. They're hardly neutral parties. For others, it can be ideology. That means that they really believe in what it is that you're trying to accomplish with your research. There are many more reasons, but the important thing is to listen out for what their motivations may be and keep them talking. You never know what useful things they may say next. People ramble a lot. Sometimes that's a good thing. You should aim to spend the first few questions letting your interviewee get comfortable. Generally, you should stack the harder, more controversial questions toward the latter part of the interview. The key to getting comfortable is to have a few throwaway, open-ended questions that don't really address what you want to know. These questions are icebreakers that ease you and them into the interview and also help you establish a rapport. That said, you shouldn't lose sight of why you're talking to them in the first place. Try to guide them back by finding bridges between what you're saying and your questions. You should at least have a couple of guiding questions jotted down. Don't be afraid to challenge them or poke them to defend or explain their statements. It often yields much richer information. This next tip is something you want to discuss with your interviewee early on in the interview, if not at the very beginning. How are you allowed to use the information they share with you? Always try to agree with your interviewee that what they say will be on the record and attributable to them. That means you can quote your statements in your research and name them as the source of their statements. Just make sure you record them. It's hard to listen and write notes at the same time. In sensitive cases, you may want to use what an interviewee says, but not attribute it to him or her. This should only be done if there are legitimate security concerns around the interviewee's safety if the statements were to be traced back to them. In these cases, you would agree with your interviewee that the interview is off the record or not attributable to them. Sometimes your interviews will be off the record or for background only. This generally means that the information they give you can't be included in your research publication unless you manage to confirm that information elsewhere. These are just basic rules of thumb. After all, often the best interviews are conversations. 